everybody. As I mentioned before, I wanted to have a quick look, well actually a little bit of an in-depth look into the group node from SOUP and the reason why you would want to use the group node and how daisy chaining a couple of group nodes together can create some pretty uh, neat effects um, in Maya. So what I want to take a look at now is if I just grab a plane and have the node editor open so I can break out some nodes as we go along. Just increase the sub Ds on this and then turn on the wireframe on shaded mode. So when we deselect it, we can still see the component face components. Get rid of our grid. Um, good practice is to freeze transformations on anything that we do and work from the transform geometry node onwards. So let's say I want to create a bevel on here and then delete the faces that aren't beveled. So one way of doing this is to use a group node. So if I select the group node and connect that up to the transform, just the out geometry to the in geometry. And the group node is a really good way to select um, a range of components or the whole lot of components. It's a, like a safety catch. So it's a really good node to uh, get in the habit of using. So I'm going to select all my faces and if I come down to um, pattern I can just put an asterisk in there and it's going to select every single face on my mesh object so it's like a safety catch and now if I type in bevel and use a poly bevel down here the, the one with no number after it and let's connect those two up together so components and geometry simple enough and then feed that into our plane shape. We shall get a sheet. My apologies, I should uh, have this changed to edge components, not face components. And then if I just play around with the offset, you can see that. Um, I'll apply my bevel to the plane. So I just quickly switched on offset as fraction and weld space. Just give me a little bit more control here. So now I have my edges beveled and I can go in here if I want to and change it to range. And then I've got a range of edges instead and you can change your range if you want to to five. So you've got all this control here. You can use any of these as well. You can put create a bounding object and just um, have a certain amount of edges selected, for example, if I just add one now, like so, and you'll see we've got, we've got a combination of the range as well as the bounding object, and we can take off bounding object, get rid of our pattern and just have a round, sorry, take off our range. And then we can just have the selected components there, but let's just get rid of that for now. And we're just going to have all our edges selected. So from here, one advantage of daisy chaining our group nodes together is that we can start isolating our selections. <coughs> Excuse me. So for example, if I wanted Prior to the bevel, I wanted all the faces that existed selected. And then after the bevel, I wanted those faces to be deleted, but the bevel itself to remain. Well, you can do that by having a couple of group nodes together. So, what I mean is, is create two group nodes, and they, the way to do this is basically you want to 
you want the mesh before the component um, operation has been applied to it, and then you want the mesh after it's been applied to it. So we connect the first group node to the mesh prior it's been operated on. In this case, we're going to start, we want faces selected. We want all the faces selected. And then we want the mesh after it's been operated on. And again, we want all the faces selected, like so. I'm choosing pattern here from operation on both these group nodes. And then just putting an asterisk in here to select all of them. Now, we basically want to connect these two group nodes together, and we do that just by using the out component and components, like so. And to get the um, faces that are in common, so basically we want the faces that are in common between these two meshes, and do that on the group node, on the second group node. For the input components, we just want to add intersect. So now we'll basically isolate those faces, we can check that if we drop in a a delete uh, sorry a display component node, and you'll be able to see that if I just stick the input components, you can see that sure enough we've got all those faces selected after this group node. So these are our components there, and now if we feed that into a delete component. And we just feed both the components and the geometry in there. And then we go like that into there. Let's hide our display component. And now you can see that we actually have a, an interesting looking mesh object. And if we want to, we can go back into the, the second group node and we can invert. So now we've got the inversion of our selection. And so we can actually you know, start creating some interesting effects all from just daisy chaining two group nodes together. You can even go back in here, we can reduce the subdivisions and it will still update as you would expect. So that's the advantage of using two soup group nodes together. Um, grabbing the mesh prior to the operation, then grabbing the mesh after the operation, chaining those two together, and then combining using the intersect node, and then you get this call effect. So, moving forward, let's take a look at the solver. And let's just create another object, platonic solid. Let's scale that up a little bit. We can change it to a dodecahedron. Increase the sub D's a little bit. It's wireframe one shaded there. Okay. So I'm just going to select that and then freeze transforms. So we can work from there now. So if I select my output mesh and just go into soup and select the solver node, I'll, the Maya will automatically connect those nodes together from input and output. And if I push pay play, sorry, nothing's going to happen. As mentioned in the previous video, we've got our in time connected to the solver node and our start and end frame which can be adjusted as uh, what suits us. So, um, Let's say um, I want to an extrude a range of faces, so let's create a group node. Okay. And um, we want those faces to keep on extruding rather than um, a multitude of, fa of faces all around the mesh. We just want the same one to be extruded, so let's just create another group node. So this is the other group node daisy chain thing going on again, so um, if I swap them around, just group node, and then choose face, okay, and this time I'm going to choose 
range in 1 to 5 should be okay and then down here we want the faces again and this time I'm going to use pattern just have them all selected so but I want the mesh before it goes into the solver so let's throw that into the in geometry there and then here I want the mesh after it's come out of the solver so we do that here like that and then to connect these two group nodes together we just select them and then we use our, our in components like so now we want the intersection of those selections so we need to use the input components combine method and go down to intersect now what I want to do with them, I want to use an extrude node so extrude face and from the second group node let's just keep those two up like so and let's add some extrusion onto the extrude node and that feeds back into the solver node and it goes into the insolve because we've already got something going into the in geometry so we're just going straight into the insolve and this creates our little loop procedural loop there that just keeps on extruding the face now if I push play and get our fancy extrusion and you can see the, the faces that are part of the group 2 selection were highlighted then um, so we can reduce our range a little bit say 20 instead Okay, and even play around with some of the extrusion settings and have some quite neat effects happening, procedural effects. So every iteration of the solver node does one extrude, then goes through again each frame, iterates through each frame and another extrusion is added to the equation and that's the way to isolate the faces and the same face will get extruded over and over again so that's how you do that bit so from there you can daisy chain these together as I mentioned before so if I come down here let's say we want to go to 50 so let's have an end frame of 50 here so that'll stop calculating after 50 so now it'll just stop ok, in fact I'm just going to bring it further down to 30 frames ok, and after that let's just create a new solver node like so and that finishes at 30 so we want this one to finish at 31 and we'll just go to 60 like so. so we want to do the same thing again create two group nodes and we want the mesh after the first solver and the mesh object after the second solver like that and then we connect those two together through the component list okay, and we want faces here again and we can do a range again let's say 10, every 10th one and then here we want to we want all our faces selected and come down to intersect so now we've got our, our, our component section again our successful one and we can work on to another extrude sorry extrude face components Hop those two up like so, add some extrusion and then hook that up to the solver output to the unsolve and so now should go up to 30 ok 
Okay, that's not been too high. Let's bring this down to two. No, nope. okay, what's going on here? Uh, okay, so my second group node component type should be face. Okay, 30, boom. Okay, so let's bring it back up to 10 again. And if we go to our extrusion, we can change, take the keep faces off both of them. Let's have a look at the start. Okay. Now, got some trouble trying to. What have I done here? Let's get rid of the grid and turn off wireframe is shaded. So let's try that again. So we'll grow in there and these are our secondary. So I can actually scrub through here because on the silver node we've got it on cache. So I can scrub through and I see that's not quite what I'm after. So I'm going to reduce that right down extrude right down and maybe make these pointy as well okay so now they're growing on these leafy bits I'm getting some on the main shell as well um, and that can be isolated as well but there you can see how we can daisy chain these solver nodes together and you can keep going and just keep uh, applying the double group node concept and that's basically how you get that to work successfully so I hope that um, clears up uh, a little bit of confusion there if you have any questions just jump on the forum and we'll be happy to help you out Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next um, video. Thanks.